Hi, welcome back. Now today I want to try and keep the bass as simple as possible using some of the oldest tricks and that is separating loot. Now as you can see this will have 13 doors which is quite a lot especially if you're a solo or if you are using this as a group bass. Now as I said I'm a bit tired of doing bunkers, everyone's doing them. I want to try and keep it as simple as possible. Now you see the normal 2x2 two two is very small, very obvious and where to go. The key for this bass is separating all the loot into different sections so if someone's going to raid this base they're going to have to work really hard to actually get to it now jumping straight into the base i'll take you through it there's a couple of tricks you can do to make it stronger but then not so much to make it stronger but to try and force them in a path now you can see from here they come to a wall it uses a little trick of the half wall because of load a foundation now you can use fire rockets to break this out it happens but we're trying to make them work through this area because when they come through here they then have to get these shotgun traps basically run out and then when they get through this door they've got turrets straight away so straight away if someone is going to try and take the doors it's going to prove to be quite a problem for them now as i said i've separated all the loot into all four corners of the base reason for this so again it maximizes all of the base now this wall here if you are going to build this and stay in it for a while i would probably make armored because you can get to it quite quick but again if you're using this as a group starter base you're not going to run it too long but you can build up and honeycomb the base as well but i'll let you decide that because a lot of people do change their mind now the tc is stuck behind your workbench you can get to it just by looking for the crack of the door another old trick so if the bag drops they're gonna have to take the workbench out to actually get to the loot that falls from it very simple very easy i've tried to keep this super super simple a lot of bases at the minute are quite complex a lot of players who watch build videos are new to rust so i want to try and go back to some of the old ways of building now for the top if you are going to stay in this, I recommend you put like half wall honeycomb on the top. Reason being, if someone gets rockets or if you're on a server that hasn't white BPs, this will minimise the spread of any rocket splash. Obviously, this will be in metal. I'll just leave it in twig for now. But that is simply all you need to do. So again, they're going to have to keep working and spending more. As I say, in every single build, you're always going to get raided. The key is to make them spend as much as possible to try and raid you. Now, the normal way for people at the minute is still to go through doors. So I think 13 doors is quite a lot to actually take on, to take this space on. I mean, it's, it's I, I personally wouldn't want to do it, especially if you have to go through a wall as well. It's going to stop a lot of people in the track straight away. So very, very simple. I say we're trying to pull away from the two by two that people always go to do and maximize the space that you've got so we'll jump straight into this i'll show you it's built very simple and it has a starter base now where possible i always try and have a starter base within any of the base builds the bunkers are quite hard to do so because you have to start lower and work your way up It'd be quite challenging but with this it's very very simple now your TC will be exposed and you'll have one honeycomb protecting this in the full build. However, even if they get TC, because you spread the loot out, they're not going to get everything from your base. Now, with bunkers, we tend to find that everything is in the one area. So if they do get to it or if they worked out the cheapest way, it, bunkers can become quite cheap to raid. Yes, some of them are armoured, but it's not spread out as much. Now, I'm going to do this all in stone. I know the original base was in metal, but you can armor key parts up like the walls outside for the TC, but I'm trying to keep it as practical as possible. Personally, I don't like using armored walls, etc. because the upkeep, you don't want to be spending HQM on upkeep. You want to be using it for gut weapons, rockets, everything else that lets you play the game. Now, with this starter base, you can extend out and have one of your loot rooms straight away. So, for very low cost, you're stretching out your starter base. And straight away, you're separating the sections. Your TC is away from your loot room. Now, if you're a group using this as like a group starter base, this is going to be perfect for what you're doing. 
even a solo. Now, I know a lot of solos say they can't get this sort of resource that quick. It's not that hard. This is the same cost practically as a 2x2 two or 2 by one It's not a lot if you think about it. Now, I put wooden doors on for now because I personally like to have garage doors. And if you can, get double armour doors. Now, a lot of people, again, say they can't get the gears. Just recycle. It's very easy. If I can do it, and I am very, very crap at PvP and die all the time, you can do it. Trust me. It's very, very easy. Just build near a recycling point, which is quiet, like an outpost. Or even the airfield seems to be quite quiet because it's got two. I personally find them the best places to go. Now, once you get a first look room in place, that's you pretty much set for the first good couple of hours of the wipe. Now, already at max, you're looking at one, two, three, four, five doors straight away just with this little base, which is quite a lot still. Now, if you are on a fresh wipe BP server, you're not going to have to worry too much about rockets because people are going to want to try and spend to get back what they're actually putting into it. And a little base like this, if they're smart, they're not going to do it. Now, I'll do the full footprint just now, working my way out, just so you can see it. I won't put the actual roof on till last because the lighting is very poor and rust performance at the minute is very bad and it seems to be shades and shadows that's just causing a lot of the issues. For me personally anyway, I don't know if you're having the same problems, but if you are, let me know. Now, if you want to put the drop in, I will show you how to do that, but if you just want to have normal doors, just leave these two foundations in place. You have to make sure you've got the ground that's capable of doing it, so when you do your first foundations, just test that out, run maybe the footprint out, and put it in place. Now, as I said, this is only getting done so we can force them to go a certain path. We want those turrets to work them and make sure it slows them down, because as soon as people hear it going off, they're going to get counter raided, probably killed, people take off what they've got and they'll just run away. Most people will continue doing the raid that they've planned, but the, some people will try and follow on, but if they get killed straight away and know the shotgun traps, chances are they're probably not going to bother. If you use shotgun traps, make sure you actually fill them. Don't put 20 rounds in and think the world's going to save you. It's not. Make sure you fill them with as much as you can. They're very cheap, easy to make. Just spam a good 100, 200 in there they will protect you. Now, building out, if you want to do the little triangle I had, you have to put two half walls here. I'll rotate these in a second. Put it in place. This gives you an area for a box or bench and your turret. i put the shotgun turret at the bottom so it gets the perfect line of sight for when they're in the little gap. It will just take them out straight away and slow them down dramatically. Now, because we're only using one triangle, when you're upgrading and breaking it away for that floor, it won't cost that much. Now, this back section is just to protect your TC a little bit. As I said before, it's up to you if you want to armor some walls. I'm not going to do it in this because, personally, as I said, I don't like doing them. It's just HQM costs get too much. If you're doing it in stone, make sure all your hard sides are facing out because you want people just to be able to pick through, especially points like this make sure, again, they're having to work hard for it. Upgrade to metal as soon as you can. Now, I'm doing it all metal uh, stone just now, just so you can get a basic feel for what it is. Once you've got the footprint out, start doing your loot rooms. Do one at a time, locking it down systematically. I know I'm doing it all at one time just now, but try and get it in a way where you know if you can build it up to that point. This will not have a shooting floor, the way it's done, if you're a solo player. If you want to to have some sort of shooting floor. The triangle where the turret was, I'd maybe use that as a jump up and work a door up from there and have a second floor. That is complete your prerogative. I am not one for having shooting floors. If I'm gonna have a heli tower, I have it outside of my base, sometimes attached to my large furnace base. I try to keep my base separate from it. A lot of people ask why, and it's because if you start getting rocketed, if people start seeing you using your base, they're gonna probably target that. I try and put my heli base a good 100 to 200 meters away from my main base and build little crappy bases around about it just to make them think what's happening. Now you see with the T with the actual workbench down, the TC can only be accessed from the top. Wait till you've got a tier three before you do this. Put your tier one 
directly in front of it, break it out when you have your tier two and have both workbenches in there if needs be, or put your T two T two sorry outside. That's what I tend to do. I usually have like a little room or wooden foundation and I just get rid of it when I don't need it. Some people keep them, I don't. Now when you get to roof piece, you drop it all in place and I'll show you if you want to stop the splash damage, by all means. I would definitely have a square in the centre, that is your first port of call, that will mean you have to go corner to corner, then just spam half walls across, make sure you lock up the top for this piece, this just stops any splash damage going through, then from there just put the half walls out as you feel necessary, this will just slow down anyone who's using rockets, if it's metal especially, you have to spend a ton more to do it. Upgrade these to stone metal as and when you've got the resources to do it. Bear in mind, if you do use that jump up to actually make it into like a second shooting floor, you won't be able to put that in place, but you won't need it because you'll have your base on top. Now, as you can see, it doesn't look pretty when you've got that, but it will save you. Now, a lot of people tend to leave a server within a day now. If you're playing an official server, I would use this as a starter base because you're going to build your main base or work on a creative server to try and work it out. You have more work of joining Discord. I have a build server which I let people use. The only thing I ask is don't spam in cargo ships because people do it. So guys, very simple, easy to make. I've got another base coming out very soon which is based on solos.